Hi, I'm Jonathan Ayest and this is Psychology of Improvising. I'm talking today about bringing everything together that we spoke about in the previous, in, uh, previous videos. That is my categorization of intervals, of perfect and imperfect consonances, and dissonances of course, but also the motions that we use with these intervals. That is parallel motion, and the voices or the, the hands move in the same direction up and down oblique motion where one voice stays the same and the other moves up and down and contrary motion where the voices move in opposite directions. Now I'm going to take a theme which is given so it's a chorale theme Herr Jesu Christ du höchst ist gut and that of course that theme has its own contours. So there are moments where it stays the same, sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes up. <clears throat> so while I'm improvising my, my bass line, my, my second voice, I want to know that I'm working within the system so that I don't have to hesitate and look back and try to evaluate what I'm doing the whole time. So if we take the first two notes, you can see that they stay the same. So that's perfect oblique motion. <clears throat> My left hand moves up from a perfect consonant, the octave, to another perfect consonant, the fifth. And I know that that's within the rules or the, the guidelines that Fuchs has given us. Let's go on. Contrary motion onto the imperfect consonants of the third, contrary motion onto the sixth, because I know that particularly when I'm using these perfect consonances I'm within the rules so I don't have to hesitate I'm making my choices and they're right and they're fine and I can move on so it means that I can streamline my thinking <clears throat> it's not the only baseline that I, that I have to play it's not that these rules are very restrictive I could also do um, a lot more parallel motions using imperfect consonances in sixths at the end, oblique motion onto the fifth, and contrary motion onto the octave. <clears throat> so I actually have quite a few options in there, I could do another one. So all, these, uh, all these options are within the rules of Fuchs, so it's, it's almost unlimited, but what's important two things. First of all is that I, it helps me remove doubt and hesitancy because as I'm categorizing my movements and my improvising in terms of intervals and motions I'm within the rules and I don't have to waste time trying to evaluate is this a good move or a bad. It's good enough. It's within the system. It works. But also another thing which I found really valuable is that these motions in particular they help me to visualize um, graphically and register what I'm doing graphically um, so that I, I have a very clear image um, of what I'm improvising, the relationships. Um, when I'm going from one interval to another, I'm able to build up a graphic. And you see, this is very important later on when things get more complicated because I already have this simple image of my movements in terms of graphic outlay. Thank you.